our stories about a landscape that you can't possibly get into. Stand by for a technique. VP was a technique that unlocked the story for me in terms of how we would tell it. My goodness. The storyline of the short that we're making is a meeting between a hapless millionaire, Salvador Dali, his uh, protege, and Sigmund Freud with a crazy dream sequence. We have uh, a character who sort of goes inside a painting and the painting represents his subconscious and different aspects of his life. And so we're using VP firstly in the sort of framing scene to create a, like an office space, which is very normal, very realistic. And then from that space, he kind of moves into a much more surrealist uh, kind of landscape that mixes water and desert and cliffs and, and some objects that are entirely kind of imaginary that he interacts with. So we're kind of moving between those two different spaces and using VP in, in two or three very, very different ways from, from start to finish. No, we didn't. We replaced it. We replaced it. And three, two, one, track. Edward. Cutting there. How was that? Straight away? So that, yeah, straight away. Yeah. Almost too late. Because it's effectively a lot of different technologies coming together. Everyone's sort of creativity is always at play at all times. We have control over pretty much everything. So we can make light changes. We can make mountains bigger, smaller, uh, light different, the textures on the, on the mountains be different. I mean, that's what I like about screenwriting is the way everything evolves and takes on a life of its own uh, through all the contributions of everyone else. Because everyone brings their own artistry and skill and, and, and take on it. Mm -hmm. Wow. The team here are very, they're very calm and very capable and very creative all at the same time. Everyone seems to be yes. in good spirits, but um, I don't like to jinx it. No, oh, that's lovely. I like that. This project being my first project as DP in virtual production has been amazing because of how surreal it can be. I don't think I was necessarily nervous coming in, I think I was just conscious that, that it would present itself with different challenges. It doesn't like having lights shot into it because then you can kind of see it's a screen. But it's great for like reflections and for like uh, incidental lighting and things. Like. That's why the Mandalorian looks so good. <laughs> I didn't want to be daunted by the screens. It's, you know, if anything, it's like a, 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 an asset, you know, more light for me to mess around with. Where's the sun right now? Right here. Or maybe make it a little bit more backy. So, so we're currently on 0 0.01, 0 0.03. 0 0.05. 0 0.05. Yeah. yeah, I think that's better. Yeah, that's good. This is very different from a conventional set in that there are two cameras. And so we light for the virtual camera, which is inside the end display, and we also light for the practical set. We have wall team and lighting team watching, yeah. and we can then layer that lighting and virtual thing in. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so if we can get them to us. Blending the, the real and the virtual is, is probably the biggest challenge. But at the same time, I'm trying to push ourselves visually. Working closely with the Unreal guys. You need to try and make it sort of seamless from the foreground into the background. Same as a traditional theatre. Yes, they can correct some of them, but you know what it's like on the day. Your scene flashes up, you try and dress to it, it swings across, you, you have to wait, and then it flips. Um, so you do have to think on your feet. You might have an idea in your head, but yeah, you just gotta go with it. So. <laughs> It's the first VP production I've ever worked on. Virtual production 100% is so helpful and so useful in terms of just allowing your imagination to kind of almost take a break. It's all really visual and it's all reactive, like there aren't many lines, it's very much kind of reaction shots and you actually have things to genuinely react to. You can see the whole landscape, so obviously the reactions are quite genuine at different points, which is amazing. The green screen, you've no idea what's on the screen whatsoever, at least here you have something like a set to feel comfortable in. You just flick a switch and there's a different set on the wall. So uh, it's fascinating. I think very soon, Anne, they're going to start using virtual actors. No, and they're going to find they don't they work either. <laughs> we didn't have very much pre-production time. So we started testing after about two and a half weeks. And then we were filming in five weeks. 
and that is very fast to pull together a team of the kind of calibre we have. Oh, I mean, it's crazy because now you have to do everything kind of beforehand instead of afterwards. Like before it was shooting a lot against green screen uh, and a lot of decisions can be made afterwards by the VFX artists or the whole production. Now you have to have everything kind of front loaded and create everything at the beginning. So when we're shooting right now, the world is ready. We had rough tests. We had rough ideas of what we're going to shoot on the day. And it would work in traditional filmmaking but I feel like we have to think completely differently on more digital-based shoots. Working with Andrea has been such a lovely creative collaboration. She's multifunctional, ultimate producer. She does everything. She's bringing in a very deep understanding of how to work with actors. I have no fear. If I ask her, I say, is that over-characterized? Is that overdone? Is that too big? Is that too small? Or whatever. What she tells me, I can totally rely on. She has a very good eye for performance, for story, for character. We did run into some technical challenges and we were able to solve them creatively. Does it bother you that we go from this light to this light really quickly? A lot of the time, you know, maybe it's not been done like that before or we're finding a new solution and, and the, the team here have really risen to the various issues. We're going to go from a shot of seeing the statues in this light to then in a completely different light. Communication is the most important thing on set. Now you also have to communication between softwares, cameras and tracking systems. Dynamic lighting! I think that we need to rotate this so that we don't see the statues. It's not as simple as let's just bring the camera around here. It's like, well, you turn the actor and then move the wall because you've only got that much wall. You don't have a 360 degree wall. Well, we should move it to something closer to that. Yeah. Or indeed um, that. Yeah. 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 Could we rotate the uh, in display? 90 yes. degrees right. Because we were in a surreal world, I presented to Andrea on the walk down that we do, which is on a dolly, if we can basically <laughs> set the sun over the course of 12 seconds. For now, let's just lose these five. We can keep frame temperature and intensity in there. It's a new language to learn, all based on engines, technologies, developers. The great metamorphosis is about to occur. You happy with this? Mm, mm, mm. There's one more thing. The VP Futures scheme has been absolutely amazing for us because we've gone from sort of 0 to 120 in the space of three months. The training programme itself is incredibly well designed. The mentorship from Industrial Light and Magic and from Epic Games has, has just been phenomenal. It's amazing how this has all come together over all of those weeks of learning and development to see it all come together at this point. ILM and EPIC are here because they see the opportunity, they see that there is real people with real talent, we just need more companies embracing this tool that is virtual production. I think that collective passion has really helped this programme become the unique programme that it is. I knew very little about VP before I came on this. I feel whilst not exactly being an expert, I certainly from the writing perspective, I do understand how it works and seeing it up close and actually getting that physical experience of being in the studio and uh, to come away with something that I think we can be really proud of is really exciting. We now go into post and use this prototype tape as a way to attract funding and commissioning. This is key to an actual series that they want to make in the future. It will help them pitch and sell um, and they'll be much more ready for that than they would be if they hadn't have done the course. It's going to help them produce more projects that are specifically VP. This scheme will help us build capacity. What we're trying to do is, is sow the seeds for the industry to, to develop, to to, to build its capacity, to train more people in a more diverse and equitable way so that we can see a whole new generation of artists, designers, filmmakers that are able to come through with a thorough understanding of the mechanisms that go into virtual production and in particular 
ICVFX. For me as an individual, it is a reinvention actually for me as a, as a filmmaker. It's such a different new skill and in, in particular Story Futures Academy, the support they've given me on the actual shoot has been, you know, really above and beyond. Virtual production is going to become more and more the go-to technology that productions use, maybe in the five-year period, maybe not in the three-year period. Up until that point, what we need to do is really get all the different technologies working together in a much more smooth way. I think where we are at right now is kind of where VFX was at you know, 10, 20 years ago. So we're seeing the foundation built now and this is gonna become an entire industry unto itself. Genuinely, personally, from me, a very big thank you. I do think that you are an incredibly professional and very, very kind, very, very heartfelt, very, very lovely team. This is the final wrap on the surreal life. Well done. Thank you.